All right, it's good to be back. Let's uh, let's give a hand to the band. They've been they've been fabulous. All right, we'll keep things moving right along, because I know some of you want to go watch a football game, but that's all right. We understand. We understand. This year, we have four recipients for the Skip Jason Community Service Award. This award recognizes extraordinary individuals whose efforts have improved the housing conditions of the rural poor in their communities. This award goes to people who work in the trenches and are often unrecognized outside of their communities. This year's awardees are Brad Bishop, Executive Director, Brad's the Executive Director of Self-Help Homes in Provo, Utah. Martha Mendez. Martha's the Director of uh, Single Family Housing Development for the Coachella Valley Housing Coalition in Indio, California. And we have Andy Saavedra. Andy's the Senior Program Officer for Rural LISC in Washington, D.C. And we have Retha Patton. <laughs> Retha is the Executive Director of Eastern 8 Community Development Corporation of Johnson City, Tennessee. Our first awardee is Brad Bishop. Since creating Rural Housing Development Corporation in 1998, Brad has since has been awarded and completed eight successful 523 grants. Now, Brad, I did three of them. That's amazing. Now, you, you're going to have to tell the stories about what happened with some of these grantees, because if you did eight of these and provided over 350 homes, we know you got some stories of some fights you had to break up. Otherwise, you didn't do this. His efforts in making the mutual self-help program a success in rural Utah and, and, and Wasatch, uh, uh, Wasatch counties in Utah has had an impact of over more than 1,415 people and in 350 families with a place to call home. Brad has been involved in multiple projects outside of self-help housing. He was involved in the development and management of migrant farmer farm labor housing, partnered to develop and restore historic property into single family homes, and partnered on multiple low income housing tax credit projects for seniors. Brad is committed to affordable housing. He serves on many boards and organizations that assist affordable housing, including the National Rural Housing Coalition, Neighborhood Housing Services of Provo, Utah Housing Coalition, NeighborWorks Provo, and the National Association of Housing and Redevelopment Officials. Brad has 18 years combined housing experience with Rural Housing Development Corporation. His positive and contagious attitude and great leadership abilities have improved many communities throughout rural Utah. Come on, Brad. Come on, Brad. This is fun, Kelly. Come on over here. <laughs> so. <laughs> they make this look so easy. 
Well, I, first of all, I want to thank Moises and his staff. I, they're very gracious, and um, I feel very honored and, and to be recognized and uh, keep thinking about all the uh, wonderful staff we have and a great board and uh, many partners, uh, including the Housing Assistance Council and with Housing and Urban Development and USDA Rural Development. And uh, Tony, you, you've made it really fun. To, to work with you these last couple of I, it's just been, it's been great. Um, I feel many, in many ways this award represents many organizations uh, in Utah over the last 15 years who especially have been involved with uh, self-help housing. Uh, over the years we've had uh, close to 1,500 homes in Utah which represents about 4,500 uh, people and and with the self-help program, it, it, it's awesome to see them build communities as, um, as neighbors, as only the self-help program can do. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a great program that changes lives. Uh, it uh, ends the, the cycle of poverty and uh, just brings a lot of bright futures to, to many of, the, of their children. Uh, we just had a, a, an open house uh, the two days before Thanksgiving. And it was, it was mentioned yesterday, it's the best feeling to see families move into their homes for the first time with their moving vans around the corner and ready to kick us out of their lives because we've been involved with them for the last eight to 10 months. And, um, and I think this is why we lose our hair. It's 523 grantees, uh, one to another. And I, I feel as many as you, though, that the purpose of life, of life is uh, to help other people. And... Um, one of my favorite sayings is that when you're, you're in the service of your fellow beings, you're only in the service of your God. And I uh, feel that uh, and believe that to be true. And I um, love this time of year. I love um, uh, the time of Thanksgiving, uh, time to give service to others. And uh, get, receiving this award makes me think about uh, those uh, closest to me, uh, I grew up in uh, Glendale, Arizona. My dad was a uh, high school teacher for English for 33 years, and such an example to me. He never took a sick day in those in those uh, full 33 years, um, except for that time my brother did something, and I better not repeat that here. But um, and then there's my mom, who raised not only me but three other brothers, uh, stayed at home, and. Um, she actually made us breakfast, a hot breakfast, six of the seven days a week. So even my mom was smart enough to take the seventh day and, and, and rest on, on that day. But uh, she, she made sure that we all learned hard work. I made sure we went to school and uh, that we, we tried to live good, good lives. Um, then at age 25, I learned to be very grateful that uh, automobile tires are not perfect. Uh, when I was... Uh, in Sedona, Arizona in June 1995, saw this girl make a U-turn and slam into a curb and, and get a flat tire. And I got to, got to change that tire and uh, five kids later and 18, almost 19 years now, uh, we've been... Uh, <laughs> we've, we've been married and... Uh, I finally had to put my phone to airplane mode because my notes are on here and my kids keep calling. <laughs> Where's mom? They're always asking for mom. They're not asking for me. So, um, Anyways, I, I've been very blessed to work with uh, many of you here uh, and get to know many of you over the years. Um, I have uh, two special friends from Utah who run the same programs and uh, Kim and Scott. And, and then many of you who also run the program uh, and affordable housing programs all across America. And it's just been an honor to get to know you and uh, try to mirror all the actions that, that you do in, in your lives, in your communities. And um, lastly, you know, Moises, you, you were the first funding source to approve, get approved for us in 1998. And to have that trust extended and uh, re-extended over the years uh, and work with your staff. In fact, I, I saw Bola Ajayi here the other day, and he was my first loan officer. And uh, it was just, it's just, uh, I've become great friends with many of, of your staff, and I uh, just wanted to.
thank you again, and, and thank everybody here, and get to know everybody, and, and uh, thank you. Thanks again, Brad, and congratulations. Our next recipient of the Skip Jason Award is Martha Mendez. Martha currently serves as the Director of Single Family Housing Development at the Coachella Valley Housing Coalition. She has long exemplified a commitment to her community in building and preserving more than 1,000 single family affordable housing units in the city of Coachella, California. For 13 years, she has worked to transform lives by leading the development of rural affordable housing. She not only helps families fulfill the dream of home ownership, she also, in her spare time, mm -hmm, uh, <laughs> encourages f students in her local community to pursue higher education through her work with the, the Dr. Caron Foundation and the Indio Rotary Club. Supporting people at the local and national level has been equally important to, to Ms. Mendez. She is a valuable advocate for rural housing and has carried the message that quality affordable housing for farm workers and low income persons is essential to a robust economy and vibrant communities. Mendez has a remarkable ability to build networks, to touch people personally, to inspire by giving back to the community and to lead. Congratulations, Martha Mendez. Thank you very much to all of us, to all of you. Uh, Moises, Hack, staff, thank you for this recognition, but you're recognizing my work through CVAC. I've been at CVAC almost 14 years in February, and I want to thank John Milley because he welcomed me to this family 13 years ago. And <laughs> he has been a mentor, a leader, and he has shown me the path for housing. And I really, I can thank him enough for, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you. Um, I'm, I'm from Mexico. I moved to the U.S. when I was 13 years old with my parents and my sister. And thanks to that choice, I'm here. I always say there's always people that touch your lives. And I've been very lucky because I had many, many people that have opened doors to me. One, education was really important to me and to my family, and I met a lot of people that gave me that opportunity from high school to my college and to my master's, which was a, a scholarship I got through in, uh, to the Rotary Club. Um, and John, when he opened and, and offered me the job position at CVAC. It has been 13 years of many fulfilling um, opportunities and seeing families moving into their houses. Coming from a Hispanic community, for me it's very important to give that opportunity to, to other people. And I'm very glad to be part of this, fa of this family. And I also want to recognize two co-workers and friends that are here, Pedro Rodriguez and Mariani Barra. Both of them have been with Coachella Valley Housing Coalition for many, many years, have seen the organization grow, and have been key providers and supporters of the organization. So thank you also for all your support and for also for everything you do, and for everyone, because all of us as a group, we do a lot of things in our community, and we affect. and provide a lot of um, goodwill for, for the families that move into our houses. We don't only provide housing, but we provide opportunities. Thank you so much.
All right, congratulations again, Martha. <laughs> Our next recipient is Andy Saavedra, Senior Program Officer for Rural Lisk, Washington, D.C. Andy is a former employee of HAC and currently a Senior Program Officer for Rural Lisk. He has done ex extensive work in the High Needs Delta region with Northeast Louisiana Delta Community Development Corporation and Mid-South Delta LISC. Andy has worked in the trenches for many years and in diverse environments as a community leader committed to improving the lives of low-income people living in rural areas. He has worked to build the capacity of rural nonprofits, facilitated co collaborations to positively impact community change and leverage investments into rural development initiatives. Andy worked in the most improvised parishes of Louisiana to implement rural housing program. His work has helped hundreds of low-income families become homeowners and build millions of dollars in assets. With 20 years of experience in rural housing nonprofits, Andy is a devoted community development professional and has committed his career to improving the lives of low-income rural families. Congratulations, Andy. Oh, boy. All right. I had to write some notes down, but I'm going to try to keep mine short. Um, First thing I gotta say, I'm in a room of my heroes. Uh, you've been my heroes since I was a teenager. Um, some of you go back to as far as being in school. Some of you I've even harassed for autographs. I've been a fan of your work for so much. You know who you are. And the reason for that is because of my personal experience. I grew up in a low-income household. I was a Head Start baby. I lived in Section 8 housing. Uh, we had food stamps until Reagan cut them. The senator's gone, so I can say that now. Um, and I know the work that you do and the opportunities that you give to people is, is so important. I mean, in the case of my family, my Cuban immigrant grandparents raised a kid with a law degree, a sister with a nursing degree, and two Iraq war veterans. So they got a good return on their investment. <laughs> I want to say I've been privileged to work with amazing teams at HAC, uh, the Northeast Louisiana Delta CDC, and now with LISC. It's like going from the Yankees to the Yankees to the Yankees. <laughs> and I really, want to, I really want to thank Moises. Moises gave me my first real job out of school. Uh, I had been doing housing and wanted to do this ever since I was a little kid. Um, my grandmother came home one day when I was about 12, and she was crying. There was um, an asked her why she was crying. And if you ever had seen your abuela cry, it just, it just breaks your heart. And she, um, she had taken a homeless woman into a restaurant, into a diner uh, that we had seen around and had just been worried about, like, what do we do about this lady? And she had taken her in, and the proprietor kicked them out, kicked them both out. And that's really where it started. Uh, in, in high school, I did some community organizing in the South Bronx that I interned for as community service. Uh, when I got here, I interned for every CDC I could. I interned at the Low Income Housing Coalition, and that's where I got to start to know some of, some of y'all. And, and Moises gave me my first shot to, to help me you know, help others uh, like you do. Um, and those older folks who were around the hack at the time our colleagues, uh, God bless them, John Linfield, Joan Gordon, they all really mentored me and brought me along. Um, Joan always said, you got to get out into the field. And, um, and John Frisk, uh, John Frisk made me get my driver's license. Because <laughs> I was a city boy. I didn't, I didn't need it. <laughs> so he's like, Andy, there are rural areas. And, and I did things like have people pick me up. Um, take the bus to like Sacramento <laughs> and get somebody to put me back on it. Um, so I did, the first place I ever drove a car was from the Jackson Airport, nearly killing myself learning how to merge onto Interstate 20 and go into Lake Providence, Louisiana. 
in, in 1996. And I was just shaken to my bones uh, to see the poverty there. This was the start of the Shaw program. Uh, and I went to go visit all the Mississippi groups that were, that were grantees and just, just had an amazing education. And, and it shook me so much, um, I moved there. I, I went in 99 and, and, and I spent 14 years there. Um, and when you meet your fellow Southern, Southern CDC directors, those men and women, and most of them tend to be women, by the way, strong women. Um, the only words that can really come out of your mouth is, is, is brother and sister, how can I help you? You know, do what you do for others. So I want you to keep helping those families find that opportunity too. Thank you very much. Congratulations again, Andy. Our final Skip Jason Award recipient is Retha Patton of Eastern 8 Community Development Co Corporation in John City, Tennessee. In 15 years at Eastern 8 CDC, Retha has become the voice of affordable rural housing locally, regionally, and nationally. When she began her tenure at Eastern 8, CDC, she joined a staff of two that was built, that was building five homes a year, managing nine rental units, and providing home education to nearly 100 people annually. Within five years, production was up to 50 homes a year, and rental units have steadily increased to the current level of 150 managed. More important than the numbers is the collaborative and the, inno the innovative way that Retha achieves results. She brought to the Eastern Eight the importance of partnerships and collaborations. In her capacity as Executive Director of Eastern Eight CDC, she has formed partnerships with over 30 agencies, local governments, and nonprofits that are working to improve the housing conditions of the rural poor and the special needs populations. Retha is known for thinking outside the box and takes no as just another way to, to rethink the proposed solution and project. <laughs> examples of her innovative solutions are numerous. Some examples are advocating for the needs and securing the funding for both rental housing developments and single family home ownership operations for veterans. And she developed the first post-purchase education program in Tennessee. Congratulations, Reed. I'm sitting also in a room full of greats, I, and I did not prepare words to say, but everybody that knows me knows that I have no problem talking impromptu. So um, I will have to say that uh, all things happen for a reason. I certainly believe that. Uh, divine intervention plays a huge role in my life. And Chuck can appreciate the fact that I'm currently in the Achieving Excellence program. And not less than a month ago, I was taught to tell my story. So I guess I have the wonderful opportunity to tell my story. Um, but I, I don't know how I ended up in the housing business because it was not my goal to, to start out like most of you in this room. I wanted to be a 4-H agent, if all of you are familiar with 4-H. I was uh, a rural person, and I loved 4-H. I went all the way to the national level. 4-H changed my life forever, and I felt indebted to it, and I just wanted to share it, share it, share it. Well, I just never had the opportunity to get into 4-H for whatever reasons, and I've wandered through about 17 other jobs, and <laughs> finally f landed in this world. But the minute I landed, I knew that that's where I was supposed to have been since the beginning. And the beginning was when I was about, oh, I'm gonna say uh, six, seven years old. If you can imagine, here's a kid on the beach 
and playing in the sand and taking my two fingers and making roads with those two fingers and using matchbox cars. And I was creating communities on the sand using seashells to build houses, building houses out of packed sand. Have any of you done that before? I was doing that and I never knew that that's what I was supposed to have been doing with my life. But when I found this world, thank God I found it, that it was where I was supposed to be. And when I, I'm a newbie to this world, but man, I hit the ground running and I'm making up for lost time. And I, I just so appreciate you because this group is who provided my inspiration, my mentoring, my coaching, and I pay it forward every day, guys. I, I know what that meant to me, and I pay it forward every day. So thank you very much. Let's, let's have a round of applause for all of the awardees today. You know, this has been a tremendous evening, but I would be remiss because it's been a great conference. It has been well run. Everything has come together. And I want to make sure that the, the Hack staff is acknowledged. Hack, stand up. Hack, staff, stand up. I, I, I want Moises to know that the board truly appreciates your, your efforts and those of the staff and that this is just a further commitment to the affordable housing initiatives that we have to do each and every day of our lives and, and it's our compliments to you for the, the efforts that you put out here today. Once again, thank you. We appreciate that. Well, I want to thank everybody for being here this evening. We're going to conclude our, uh, our services for today, our ceremony for this evening. But, but the, the, the uh, event is not over because in the morning, 8.30, got breakfast. So you have to come on back. Once again, thank you. <laughs>